Okay, so the last episode of Miss Marvel just aired, and I had a few thoughts. You probably already saw the title, which I think sums up my feelings the best. The show is a lovable mess. Why lovable? Well, before the show even aired, Marvel advertised the hell out of the main actress of the show, Iman Melani, and I think it was the right move. This show needed a certain juvenile and optimistic energy, and she brought it, before the show and during it. And she's probably the biggest asset that carries Miss Marvel. The main actress's energy is so infectious that you can't help but feel at least a bit cheerful about the show. Of course, not everybody shared the same enthusiasm about the show as the main actress, but trust me, we will circle back to that later. But you know, you can like something and recognize its flaws. Nothing on this earth is perfect, and Miss Marvel is no exception. Actually, the show is far far from being perfect. But what is Miss Marvel actually about? So Miss Marvel follows the origin story of a character named Kamala Khan, who lives in Jersey City. She happens to be the fan of MCU superheroes, specifically Captain Marvel. Whilst going through her grandmother's stuff, she stumbles upon a magical bangle that unlocks her powers. As it turns out, she is something called a Jinn. And once she happens to display these powers in public, she has an agency called Damage Control chasing after her. They act as one of the antagonists in the show. On top of that, we also have the Clandestines, a group of Jinns who want to get the bangle from Kamala and return to Jinn dimension called Noor. As the plot progresses, we see Kamala explore her family's past, her own culture, and also her powers. All in all, the plot isn't that complicated. It makes for a nice little origin story. But this story is troubled by its writing. To put it bluntly, the writing on the show can be a bit sloppy. And this especially shows up through the villains of the show. So the clandestines are supposed to be this mysterious and threatening group of powerful djinns. But honestly, after the first watch, I didn't even remember most of their names. They were that memorable. You see, in writing, there are essentially two things that you want to do to create compelling and memorable characters. First, you want to give the characters a motive, something to strive for, and the show actually does that. The clandestines want one thing, to return to Noor, their home dimension. At its core, it is simple, but it is sufficient enough to fuel the plot. And two, you want to make a character well, a character. You want to give them characterization, and this might be achieved by giving a character a backstory, giving them emotions and traits. And this is where I believe the show's writing fails the most. You you see, the clandestines are not really characters. They are more so cardboard cutouts that are meant to be the antagonists. I mean, the entire group has the same general backstory, aka they were from the Noor dimension and at one point happened to be involved with Kamala's great grandmother. They also have the same quirk, aka powers of being the Jin, but that's about it. I think they should have made at least one of the group's members to be compelling enough to sell the clandestine stuff. I mean, they kind of tried to do that with Najma, but she isn't really that compelling. When you think about it, the only death that we got with her was her having a son, who she then kind of ditched and that's about it? And there is certainly nothing compelling about the rest of the clandestines, hence why they don't really work as villains. Another group that wasn't really fleshed out was the Red Daggers. I mean, I get what they were supposed to be, but at the end they were only there to deliver exposition. Like, she meets a member of the Red Daggers, has a little fight, then she suddenly is taken to their little headquarters, only to be given a fancy PowerPoint present presentation just because the plot demanded it. I just don't really understand the need of them being there, since they only delivered the exposition that was crucial to the protagonist. I mean, I kind of get why, because it was convenient, and also they filled some screen time. Also, is it only me, or did Kamala become trustful of them way too fast? Like, okay, so Kamala meets the clandestines, they talk about Jin powers and the bangle, and then she begins trusting them in about 5 minutes. And then whoopsie-daisy, they stab her in the back, and well, turns out that they are evil. You could say that Kamala is young, so she is naive. But this encounter could and should bring her some character development. She could learn not to trust everyone to be more careful. But then she goes to Pakistan, meets another foreign mysterious group of people who happen to know about the Jinn powers and all that stuff. And I guess she learned absolutely nothing from what happened with clandestines. Which is a little upsetting, because in a certain way it undermines the character of Kamala. It makes her look a little bit stupid for potentially stepping onto the same rig twice, and doing so without more much of second thoughts, and because the writing is spotty that way, it actually spawns some nonsense into the show. 
so let's talk about that. To me, the first nonsensical thing in the show was the damage control. And here I am mostly referring to the whole clandestine escape from the damage control facility. I think everything about that was just so contrived. So you are telling me that the damage control is escorting these obviously powerful and dangerous individuals with a small group of guards? So of course it makes sense that the clandestines wiped out these guards in seconds. It feels like for an organization that is supposed to deal with these sorts of things, they were underqualified and a bit incompetent. This also shows up when they try to capture Kamala. Again, they are a government-funded organization that is supposed to know how to deal with these problems. But for the sake of plot convenience, Kamala manages to escape them. They just got overpowered too easily for my taste. The second nonsensical thing comes from what happens in episode 5. So basically what happens is that Kamala is attacked by the clandestines. They fight and then the veil appears in front of them for some reason. Then one of the clandestines, walks up to it, touches it, and becomes obliterated. And then Najma, after seeing the literal skeleton of her teammate, walks up to the veil, touches it, and also becomes obliterated. But, 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 but why? Why did you do that? Didn't you see what happened to the last person who did that? It was a bit difficult to understand what the hell happened in the moment. Because this isn't backed up by anything. We didn't see her turning into good. She literally had no character development whatsoever. And also somehow her death grants her son some superpowers? But like, what about your plans to return to Noor? What about your other teammates? I think she just gave up way too fast. She was literally waiting to get back to Noor for a hundred years. And she gave up all of that in a heartbeat. Just a side note, but... The CGI on those skeletons looked awful. So I just believe that the whole thing was too muddy. It could have been explained more properly, but wasn't. And that, I think, is a reoccurring problem within the show. Because something similar happened with Aisha in the flashback. Actually, it reminds me of Wanda's powers in Multiverse of Madness, because the bangle suddenly does anything the screenwriters wanted to do. As it turns out, the bangle can now also make people time travel. Literally, all it takes is for someone to stab the bangle and she suddenly travels back in time. But honestly, I think the whole time travel thing was a bit unnecessary. I mean, yeah, sure, Kamala brought her grandmother to her great-grandfather, but like, did we really need that? When you think about it, Kamala doesn't really learn anything knew that would be necessary for her. She just closes the loop by fulfilling her role in rescuing her grandmother. But again, was all of that really necessary? It wasn't like Kamala learned some crucial information. And I think that the lack of explanations and contrivances was caused by something that has plagued a lot of Marvel's Phase 4 projects. So let's discuss something I would call the Phase 4 problem. You see, there is a certain underlying pattern in a lot of TV shows and movies Marvel has been putting out recently. That pattern is the plots being rushed and contrived. But what exactly is the cause of this problem? To be fair, I think Marvel is getting a bit too ambitious for their own good. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take Miss Marvel as an example. For the amount of things they try to achieve in this show alone, 6 episodes that average around 40 minutes is not enough. Just to clarify, they are trying to have Kamala interacting with her family and Bruno, the whole deal with the clandestines, the threat of damage control, the backstory of Aisha, Kamala mastering her powers, the whole storyline of Nakia trying to win an election, the Red Daggers, Kamala traveling into the past. And they try to cram in all of these things. And they are failing. Because in the end, none of these things get enough screen time. And I think this could be fixed by either Marvel pulling back a bit and telling smaller stories, or upping the screen time and giving the story proper time to explore all of these storylines. For some reason, Marvel Studios keep doubling down on this format, aka having 6 episodes of 40 minutes or 9 episodes of 30 minutes. You would think that the screenwriters would adjust, but somehow they still end up spinning too many plates at the same time. Okay, so I think that all of these criticisms that I listed before about the show were fair, but a lot of criticisms that were flung towards the show were completely unfounded. So now, let's touch upon something called double standards. Okay, so in case you haven't noticed, this show is all about a female superhero who is from Pakistan and also happens to be Muslim. And as it turns out, a lot of people have an issue with it. So much so that when the first episode was released, people felt the need to get their pitchforks out and begin review bombing the show. Listen, not all of the negative reviews are like that, because a part of them really have a point. But on the other hand, there are also people calling Marvel too woke and talking about MCU. And I think that we need 
need to point out the double standards with all of this. To most, I think it is obvious, but to some it clearly isn't. So let me explain what I mean by that. What seems to be the issue to some people is that the show is allegedly pushing an agenda, and that it is supposedly pushing the Muslim culture onto our precious world. Some people even feel oppressed that Marvel dares to present any other culture than American. But now, let's apply this logic to the American culture. L let's put some perspective into this. So you probably don't know this, but I am European, and I come from a small country that is very much underrepresented. So underrepresented that you probably have never heard of it. So I can easily take any other Marvel movie that deals with American culture and say that they are pushing an agenda the same way people are talking about Pakistani representation in the show. I can be oppressed about the amount of movies I have seen that include the 4th of July. I can even be oppressed about the character of Captain America easily. Because how dare Marvel push an American agenda on me? The absolute goal Marvel has to impose the American culture onto me. Do you see how dumb that sounds? And this probably bothers me the most. I just don't understand how some people can be mad about Miss Marvel trying to be inclusive of another culture. It doesn't make sense to me. And the same argument can be applied to the hero of the show being a woman. And this one I think is more obvious. Because most heroes are predominantly male. But you know the thing is? Having more diversity and women as heroes literally does not hurt anyone. So let's just stop with the double standards and the hypocrisy. Okay, so probably from what you've heard thus far, you might as well have formed a grim image of the show. But I did call the show a lovable mess. So what do I mean by that? Well, the show might not have amazing writing, but let's talk about something the show does have, and something that does for the most part carry the show. Let's talk about something called the right spirit. Listen, the show is juvenile, the show is quirky, it has heart, and that is endearing enough and does make me lenient towards the show. Some people are criticizing the show for being this way, that it was geared towards a younger audience. And they are not wrong, the show is geared towards the younger audiences, but I don't really think that's a downside. It is good that Marvel is branching out and diversifying its content. I really like the lighthearted nature of the show. The show is also creative with some of its effects, and it makes the show feel more alive. It is not exactly usual for the MCU, but I appreciate it even more because of it. Not to mention, Iman Vellani is Kamala Khan. As I have said, she is such a good advocate for the show. I am just really excited to see Kamala Khan pop up in the Marvels. So basically, I think that the show has the right spirit and the right idea. You can clearly see what they were going for, but they didn't exactly deliver. But eh, I'm not too mad. Could it have been better? Yes. But there was good in it, and I appreciate that. But what about you? Did you like the show? What were your thoughts? Please let me know down in the comments. Anyway, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button while you're down there too. Once again, thank you for being here and I will see you next time.